Hey, in this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of how to install and use the Nimplant post exploitation framework uh, that was put together by Kaz Van Kooten. So this is a really cool and easy to use tool that's written in Nim. It contains some lightweight implants um, so that allow you to install them on Windows hosts and also has a really nice looking graphical interface that's really easy to navigate and allows you to in interact with any host that you've compromised. So we'll start with the installation. So what we'll do is you need to go to uh, the GitHub here. I'll include the link in the description. So we'll just copy the URL here and we'll do a quick git clone. So that's quite quick and clones into the Nimplant directory here. There are some additional um, requirements here that you need to install. Uh, super easy to do. So the CD client here. So this is to install the required packages using the Nimble Package Manager. I'm not going to do that. I've already done it. And again, there's some additional requirements here for the uh, uh, Nimplant server. And then if you're running it on Linux, which I am, you'll need to install uh, MingW here. But again, super easy to do. Uh, you shouldn't have any issues with that. So what we'll need to do is if you just do a quick ls in this in the uh, Nimplant directory, you can see you have this config.toml.example file. So this is the configuration file. So what we need to do is make a copy of that uh, to the local, the, well, the same directory. And we'll just edit that now uh, to configure the um, implants that we're going to compile. So what we need to do is you just go down to the part where it says to configure the listener IP. This will be the host that you're using for the your implants are going to call back to. So in this instance, it's going to be my Cali Linux box. So I just need to put the address that I've got configured for my uh, local virtual network. And what I think is quite cool as well is if we scroll down to the bottom, you can actually configure a custom user agent as well. So then by default, it's set to Nimplant C2 client. Um, so again, if you're trying to hide amongst the noise of a, um, you know, an environment, an organization's environment, maybe their proxy traffic, you'd want to put in something maybe that looks a little more realistic. But I'm going to leave it as it is for now for the sake of the demo. So let's get that saved. So what we need to do next is compile the binaries that we're going to use for the implants. And this, the easiest way to do this is by using Docker. So again, from the main page here, locate this part here, copy it. And we just want to run this as uh, sudo. Hit enter. And that's going to take a minute or so just while it compiles the binaries. So there's a some shell code, there's a .bin file, there's a Windows executable, and there's a DLL file as well. This is going to compile for us. So we can see now that the uh, binaries have been compiled. So what we need to do now is transfer one of these to our victim host. So it tells us here where they are, they're in client bin. So if we uh, just navigate to that location and do a quick LS on there, we can see they're all there, they've all been compiled. What I'm going to do is just stand up a quick uh, HTTP server and then copy them across to my Windows host. Uh, and if I just pull the other screen across here, I'm going to copy these to the uh, root of C on this device. I'm going to do that using certutil. So I'm going to use certutil.exe dash URL cache dash F HTTP. And then I want the IP address of the Kali host where the, those files are hosted. And I'm just going to use the Windows executable for this demo. And I'm just going to call it nimplant.exe on the target host. So obviously I can call that wherever I like. I could probably be a bit more stealthy and call it something like svchost.exe. Um, but we can see that's now been copied across. So I'm just going to move this screen back across. I'm going to cancel out of that uh, HTTP server. And what we're going to do now is we're going to stand up the actual Nimplant server, so the graphical interface. So to do that, we need to run Python again. And we can see here, we've got, it's the, the Nimplant.py file. Specify the server argument because we want to stand up the server and then you can call the server whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Fox in this demo and we want to hit enter on that. 
I'm in the wrong location. So let's just go back to here. And let's just try that again. There we go. And we can see that the management server started um, on localhost on this port here. So if I right click on this and do open link, uh, we have the interface here. On the left hand side, we have a couple of tabs here. So we have information about the server that I'm running. So there's the, I can kill the server from this location if I want to. Uh, we have the, where, the IP address of where it's running from. Uh, some information about the implant profile and the default uh, user agent that we're running. What you can do is when you're interacting with hosts, you can download files from the host. So if you do, they will appear here. And then we have information about the actual implants that we've installed. So again, if I just bring this other screen back across, I've got my implant here. I'm just going to run that as admin. And uh, we should see this appear, which it has done. So what we have here is we have a unique ID for the implant. Uh, each one has its own, obviously, unique uh, name. And we have its number here. It's the first one. And when we last saw it, less than five seconds ago, uh, we can see some information about the host itself. So it's giving me the username and the host name. And we also have the name of the process that's running. So like I said, you can name that whatever you want. Um, if you want to, I want to be a little more stealthy and call it an implant.exe. And we have the IP address of the host as well. So what we can do is we can click on this and this will bring up the console. So what we can do here is run some commands. So first of all, I'm just going to run help. Again, I'm not going to go too in depth on this. I'm just going to run some basic commands um, just to sort of demo the tool and uh, how it's used. Um, but like I say, we've got quite quite a number of useful commands here. So we can cut out some contents of a file. We can do some navigation um, around the um, file system. We can download some files. We can check what AV is running on the host. I think that's quite cool, quite useful. Um, you know, for the sake of the demo, let's just run. Uh, okay, I'll just run host name for the first one. It, it is a bit of a delay once you've hit enter. It does take a, a few seconds before it comes up. That one's actually come back quite quickly. So we've got the host name there. And um, what we can also do is we can um, take screenshots of the host. So if we run that now, hit enter on that, and we can see it's been saved uh, locally. So that will now appear in the downloads location here. So again, we can just click on that and download the actual file and view it, which is quite handy. Uh, we can create directories. So maybe you want to create a staging directory for some additional malware or some additional tooling that you're going to install. You could create maybe a temp directory. Uh, we also have info about the actual implant itself. So we'll quickly run that. Uh, and we can see there we've got the, what have we got here? So we've got the uh, ID here. Does that match up with what we see on the main implant thing, CRV? Yes, it does. So we can see here, that's the uh, unique ID for the implant. Again, the host name, the IP addressing. Uh, we have information on the OS bill, which is quite useful. And what else can we do here? What we'll actually do is as well, um, well, again, you can see you've got things like wget really useful if you want to start downloading additional files. Um, but what we can do is if I just do a uh, print working directory here, and we can see we're in the root of C. So what I'm going to do is just navigate to the uh, desktop here. So let's do uh, users. So we can see there it's running the command. So it's changing the, um, so I'm just navigating to the desktop um, directory. And we can see there it's told us that it's changed the working direction. And again, we can just prove that by running a PWD. And what we can do is have a quick look at what's on the desktop. And we can see there, I've just created a file called passwords.txt for the sake of the demo, but we could do download and then do passwords.txt. And we can see that's now been successfully downloaded. So again, click on the downloads tab with the passwords.txt file there, and then we can open this up and view it. So quite cool, quite useful, uh, and just super easy to use. I just think it's a really nice tool. So again, just a quick video there that I've put together on how to install a tool, how to how to easily use it. 
Uh, as usual, thanks for watching. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you think it's of use, uh, and I'll catch you guys soon.